Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Montez McCamish from itsmontez.com. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as you know, if you have read the title, we're talking to someone who's very, very, very influential. You all know him as J-Rock. We are live right now at this present time. So if you want to chat with me, you may do so inside the comment box. Ask questions. Get yourself deep and submerge inside this and get this knowledge. If it's not about knowledge, it's not going to be on my channel. As you know, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you don't do that, you're not going to be able to keep up. Make it a point to comment inside this comment box and make it a point to share this video. Sharing is caring, and I want you all to care. Um, without further ado, uh, Jay Rock, Justin Frazier, thank you so much for being on. All right, man. How's it going? Thank you for having me. Uh, yeah, it's awesome to have you here today. Now, uh, as you know, I've done a whole lot of um, digging into you. You probably haven't done much digging into me because you're the you're the man that's uh, the person that I can look up to as a uh, a mentor, a person that I can look up to as a teacher, a person that um, everyone wants to know. That person that they want to know is you. Could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Well, uh, currently I am a business owner and I own a company called Merchant Rescue. And what I do is save business owners on credit card processing. But more recently, I have started trading Forex full time and training thousands of people across the world how to trade the financial markets. And if I back up just a little bit, I started trading when I was uh, 19 years old. And that was back in the day when you had to pick up the phone and call your broker and ask them to place a trade for you. And then time developed, we started using platforms like Scott Trade, TD Ameritrade, et cetera. I also taught high school algebra in the hood. I call it the hood. It's a low income Title IX area. And it was a real, real experience. So I only taught one year and I became a business owner after that. I've owned a bakery. I had two bakeries for. Uh, four years, and that was a very difficult task with a lot of uh, management and labor. Yes, very, very interesting to own a bakery, and I put on quite a few pounds, but I've lost uh, lost that weight. So here we are now today teaching people how to make money in the most powerful financial market in the world, the Forex currency trading arena. Emily uh, Emily Batty says, uh, who is it? Emily, of course, you should know. You read that uh, title, you're going to get right into it. This is Justin Frazier from uh, Forex Trading. You heard a little bit about what he does. Very influential man. If you sit here and you get this power from him and him, you're going to be eating for the days of your life. Um, again, I, I really think that it's important. Uh, I, I want you to go ahead and just let's start off with J-Rock. Uh, why, why J-Rock? Well, uh, actually... It was a, a name that was given to me by a teacher when I was teaching high school because my first name is Justin, and he used to call me J-Rock every time he saw me. Well, over time, you know, I really liked the name because I thought about it. I'm actually a former minister, full-time minister. I did it for many years, went to Bible school, and I was reading through the scriptures and it talks about how Jesus is our rock. And so I said, wow, J rock, Jesus is my rock. I'm going to use that. If I ever get to the point where that becomes uh, a title or a name, that would be the name that I would use. And here we are. It's just something that I decided to use when people started asking me, say, well, what's your name? we got to give you a nickname. I said, J rock is my name. And it's stuck for years since that. Uh, you have a question in here. Do you have a Snapchat? Emily Batty asked. Uh, I do. I think it's J Rock Forex. Maybe I don't use Snapchat uh, very much. I barely even use Instagram, mainly Facebook. And I get over 500 messages a day right now trying to go through them between, you know, WhatsApp and my, all of my Telegram channels, my regular emails, my standard text messages, Facebook Messenger and <laughs> phone calls. It's uh, it's crazy. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it gets deep. Uh, if you if you couldn't hear by that, yeah, the hustle is real on his side of the field. Um, let's go ahead and take this and let's dive down deep. Let's dive down deep. Tell us what it was like growing up and being you. Man, that is a very 
Good question. I actually was born here in Texas, but I was whisked away to the Cayman Islands on an island uh, that's right near Jamaica, and I do speak fluent patois. If, uh, well, me can just talk like that, and you would get a little taste that you would never know me not come from Jamaica. Oh, so I grew, I grew up over there in the Caribbean. I'm very well cultured, and I like to say I'm well cultured, learning from uh, many different cultures that came through the island. It was a tourist, it's a tourist industry. And so they have a lot of people from around the world that, that live there. And the island is real small, probably about 60 or 70,000 in population. Grand Cayman, one of the most beautiful places on earth. And you might want to go there. Uh, you might go with me one day and you can see, I'll show you my childhood roots. But, you know, growing up, very different being on an island, it's not like in America, you know, you got a lot of things to see or do. Kids just had one thing and it was called outside. So I played in the bushes a lot. And, you know, we had friends that we would uh, catch crabs and that kind of things, catch snakes or whatever. But the ocean, you know, the beautiful ocean that we had there, the beaches, crystal clear water, white sandy beaches, you'd love it. I'm going to take you there one day, I promise. But being there, you know, I was actually uh, one of the smallest kids in my in my class. And I tell the story quite often that uh, I wasn't an athlete. I wasn't gifted in sports, but I was uh, pretty intelligent and I didn't have to study a lot to get by in classes. But when it came to sports, I had the bigger friends and I wanted to be like them because they got all the attention. They were the popular crowd. And I tell the story that, you know, when you pick teams, you have the two biggest boys or that would pick teams and they would pick one by one of all the kids that were there to be on their team. Well, it'd get down to me and maybe two others, three of us left. And the, the captain that was supposed to pick, he'd look at the three of us, look at me and he'd say, you could have them. So he would play four men down because he felt like we would be more of a hindrance. You know, that that's what they would do all the time. They felt like we would be the reason we that they would lose. So he'd rather not have us and play four men down. So I lived with that growing up and said, you know, one day I'm going to be better than all of these folks and I'm going to show them. So that's when I really uh, determined in my heart from a young age that I was going to do the best that I, I could at anything I tried and to overachieve at whatever I put my heart and mind to. And so I've always tried that. Now I have uh, an entrepreneurial spirit. So I like to try businesses and I have failed over and over and over and over and over and over <laughs> at different businesses where my family would, they would just think of me as he's just that guy always trying to find the next big thing and suck us into it. Well, now they know, they know who J rock is and now they, they realize that uh, it was all worth it in the end, but they you know, I know my family's proud of me that things have worked out that I, that I would never give up. I would never quit. If it didn't work, I'd go on to the next thing. Like the, you know, the Bible says you fall down seven, you get up eight. Mm -hmm. And that's how we are supposed to be. Don't ever let things discourage you or circumstances prevent you from getting what you want to get in life. You have a dream. You may dream about it, but if you don't put a plan, you don't write your goals down and put a plan of action in place then you will never achieve your dreams. Those goals will never become a reality. And so that's the way I live. And before I turned 30, I actually made over a million dollars by being lucky trading penny stocks. That's what most people, they like to get into because they don't have a lot of money to trade. And so they think, well, I just trade penny stocks and maybe I'll hit it big. Well, it's akin to gambling, just like going to the casino and doing scratch off lottery tickets, hoping you're going to get lucky one day. Well, after I made that million dollars, I only had it for about a month and a half. I maxed out. Uh, I bought a new car and I didn't have it. I had it in, in uh, penny stock. So I never cashed out because the CEO uh, had us believing that it was going to be worth $100 million. Hmm. So it turned out to be a big scam and I lost everything in 2006. And it was a very trying time because I had debt that I had bought a lot of stuff on the credit of the money that I had in my trading account, you know, maxed out credit cards and car because I, I had the money in the trading account, but it wasn't in my bank account. So that money disappeared in the blink of an eye. 
and I had to start over. And that was when I took professional trading education in 2007, and I learned how to trade professionally. And now I teach people full time how to do that. Emily Batty said, "What type of car?" <laughs> it was actually a Chrysler 300, uh, a 300C, and I actually had it repoed. But now I have another one. I have a black 300C with red leather interior. Very Woo! sweet. Nice, nice, yes. nice, nice. Now, now I loved, I loved how you got into that, and you were talking on some good stuff there. And we'll definitely make sure to come back and talk about persistence and talk about never giving up. But, but before we get to that, I'd like to talk a little bit on um, uh, influential right now at this time. Not at this time, but when you were younger and you're growing up. Usually, we all have, have someone that we're looking up to. We have someone that's going to push us forwards or, 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 or help us or like maybe uh, Muhammad Ali or maybe an action figure or maybe like a uh, music artist. You're looking up to these people, the individuals will. Now for you, who are you right. looking up to? Who are, your, who are your influential people that were pushing you forwards? Really and truly, I did not, I did not have any, anybody that I, I took a picture with Muhammad Ali when I was seven, but you know, that was all I really knew. You know, if anything, really and truly, who I really thought was awesome, Mike Tyson. <laughs> there you go. And he had, he had that raw, that raw, <laughs> he'll knock your face off, man. Like, that's what he was for, huh? Right. You know, his saying was, everybody's got a plan until they get punched in the face. <laughs> and <laughs> I have... I have all of Tyson's videos and I love watching him uh, fight. Like he says today, he says these boys like Mayweather and uh, <laughs> this guy that he just fought. He said, these boys are businessmen. Back oh, in my Pacquiao. day, we were killers. Pacquiao. No, Mayweather fought the other guy from the, uh, the, the uh, mixed martial arts. Uh, 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 Pacquiao, right? No, no. Pacquiao's the other boxer. Who did he fight? The Irishman. Uh, oh, uh, McGregor. McGregor, yeah, Mayweather McGregor for four hundred million, and then Mayweather and Pacquiao four hundred million. Tyson said these boys are businessmen. We were we were stone cold killers back in my day. That was when they fought to fight, and these boys just making the money, and it's a big show. So you know, Tyson had that uh, that determination and that drive from where he came from. I read about his life and his story, uh, how he he grew up and. Customato took him in and and really helped him to change his life and to become somebody. And through a series of circumstances, you know, like Don King, he had issues with promoters that basically took advantage of his skill. And I I always said I would never let anybody take advantage of my skill. And there's a saying that I use and I say, don't let people prostitute your gifts. You have to know what you're worth and charge for it because there are people out there I've got people right now that'll pay me ten thousand dollars to come and sit for a few hours and teach them what I know. And I know. I know that's right. Intellectual property has a whole correct. lot <laughs> like it's a value, you know. Correct. And some people will say, you know, when I tell them, well, I charge one hundred and fifty dollars an hour for anything that I do uh, as far as education, uh, they're blown away. And I say, well, your mind is too small and so is your bank account. You're going to have to make some money, sacrifice and save. But if you want to make money. I'm the man that'll show you how to do it. Mm, mm, you know what? We're gonna go back to this comment box real quick. Uh, hey, uh, they're they're definitely they're definitely listening into what we're talking about here. And uh, Draw with Becker says that uh, Amen to that. They definitely agree with your statement you just made. Uh, they said that Emily Batty asked, uh, "Could you shout her out, please?" All right, give a shout out to Emily. Welcome to the call. I appreciate you tuning in. Right, Hopefully, we'll connect one day. Sweet, sweet. Now, um, tell us, tell us a little bit about what school's like for you at this time. Um, you talked, you touched a little bit on it, uh, but not so much. Uh, can, can you go into a little bit? What kind of grades are you making? Are you a straight A student? Um, are, and again, like, are you kind of popular, midway popular? What, what was this like? Growing up, I was actually a straight A student up until I was probably uh, eleven or twelve years old. And at that point, that was when I started realizing that there was trouble at home. And my dad had a, had a problem. He was addicted to, to drugs and 
he had some issues. And then I lived with a stepmom also, and she had kind of checked out emotionally because of the struggle that they were having in the marriage. And uh, she was committed to him, so she wasn't leaving. Plus, I had a younger brother and sister by my stepmom. And I started realizing, you know, my sister smacked me in the head one day and basically said, you're such a moron. You know, dad's addicted to drugs. <laughs> so I uh, I started acting out in school and my grades dropped from straight A's to B's and C's and D's. And we had little booklets, report card booklets with the uh, pages. Nowadays, it's just a, a printout and you can email the report card. Well, we had booklets that we take home with all the different subjects we took. And I would tear the pages out of the failing grades. So I'd come home with maybe three pages out of 15 subjects. And they'd look at my report like, well, how does your sister have 14 subjects and you've only got three? I, I don't know. You might have to just call the school and check. I knew they weren't going to call the school. You know? So even back then, I had the mind of a criminal. And I actually had a criminal record at 13 mm. uh, from breaking and entering. I caught up with the wrong crowd and we... We went on a rampage and broke into apartments one after the other over the summer, and I ended up getting caught. And that was the turning point in my life. I got sent away a year later, and that's how I ended up back in Texas. And I lived with an aunt and uncle like the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, only it was in a small town, podunk country town in, in uh, East Texas. And I ended up living there for two years, and then I uh, had to move on from there because they had a divorce. So I told my dad when I went back home for the summer, I said, just put me on a plane and send me back. I had one more year, my senior year of high school. I said, send me back. I'll find a place to live and I'm going to finish out school. And I, by that time I was, uh, almost a straight A student. I made a B or, uh, a B here and there. I didn't make C's when I decided to turn my life back around at that age. Anyway, I came back and I lived on a, a friend's floor for a few weeks until I found a garage apartment to live in. And I worked 45 hours a week flipping burgers at Sonic. I would get up at five in the morning and this was as a senior in high school. And I would be at work, I'd work from five to 10 and then I'd go to school. Then I played soccer in the evening for the uh, high school soccer team. That's, and that's, that's, after that, I'd go home, take a shower, do my homework, get in bed, get up and do it all over again. So I did that my almost my whole senior year and it was definitely quite an experience yeah very 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 intense now where are you where are you uh how can you um kind of give someone some um uh i guess looking back at things then it may be a little bit easier to think about how you mustered up the the oomph to say i'm gonna keep continuing and be successful because a lot of people i think um that's where they struggle it's where they, that's where they want to give up. When things don't seem to go their way, they want to huff and puff and, and blow the house down. And I would like for you to go and, and kind of break that down for some of these people, how you keep pushing forwards when it all seems grim. You know, I actually would have to go back and credit it to uh, the influence of my grandfather on, on my life. Uh, he was an entrepreneur and a very strong man very, one of those very stoic, hard, didn't show emotions. And he would always tell me, you'll never make money working for the other guy. They're always going to take advantage of you. Be your own boss. Don't ever give up. Don't be a quitter and a loser like these other uh, lazy bums on the street. If you, if you don't know how to work, then you're going to be lazy and I'll disown you. And so I always had that from a young age to really try to impress him. And he was not easily impressed and to gain his approval. And I developed that, that work ethic and that, that uh, desire to succeed from an early age. And then I have to go further and say, you know, when God changed my life at 18 years old, when I decided to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior, uh, I now had a spiritual drive within me to help me along in the times of struggle, whenever I would be down and out and things didn't go my way. and you know, I'd break down and, and cry over this or that if it was so, so much pressure. I would always feel that I had peace, inner peace, that God was going to, he was going to be there and he was going to help me through. Even when I, when I lost that uh, $1.2 million, and it was actually a little more than that, I laid on this floor right down here behind me uh, for a few hours in the middle of the night and 
I just wept and cried before the Lord because I didn't know what to do. I lost everything that I had, all of my money. I was now in debt. My credit was ruined. I had 60 family and friends that had put money into the tune of $300,000 into this uh, investment that turned out to be a scam. And they were they wanted their money. So I just had to get up that after I prayed for three hours laying on that floor, I got up totally refreshed and set free. And I said, it's time to start over a new beginning. So when people would call me and they would call me almost every day, what's it looking like? If you found it and they, you're going to get our money back. I would say, look, it may take a few years or whatever. I don't know. But when I get a dollar, I'll pay you back. And, you know, here we are and things have turned around in my life over the last several years. And I have begun to be able to help people that are in need. And now I'm no longer the borrower, but I've become somebody that can assist and help people because of the power of the Forex market and the knowledge that I've gained over the years, learning how to trade and how to read charts and teach people how to do it. You know, I love, I love that. I think, I think it's so true. Uh, cry upon the Lord and he'll give you rest, you know? And mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's just, I really want to go in depth into not so much religion, but faith, um, practicing faith, having faith and applying faith. What is it to you and how do you suggest that it really does make a change in someone's life? Well, and I am big on what you just said. It's not about religion. It's about a personal relationship. Obviously, I believe uh, a certain way. I believe that Jesus is the only way and I don't deviate from that, but I don't judge people. I pray for them. I don't look down upon people because I know, you know, I when you're when you're broken and you've been through some hard things and uh, you get your face smashed in or your head knocked off in different scenarios, you tend to be uh, humble and you tend to realize that you're not all that and that you need to rely on something greater than you to help you get through. And that's how it is for me. When I talk to people about it, I say, look, all you need to do is just pray whatever you want to call your higher power or the being, I know who he is, but however you want to do it is up to you. You call out to the one that, that made you, the one that created you, and he'll answer you. I promise he'll show you who he is. And if I cannot tell them who it is, if they're not interested, they have another belief. Well, I say, hey, he'll reveal himself to you. I believe it firmly. He's going to give you signs and, and visions, and I'm not worried about it. It is not my goal to save each individual. It is my goal to be the light and the hands and feet of my creator to those in need on this earth. And so that's all I can do is be a blessing to people and share with them what I know if they want to know where my faith is from or, or what I believe in. I'll be glad to tell them, but I'm not going to shove it down anybody's throat or say, this is what you must believe. I've been through too much and I've seen too much to be a uh, dogmatic or arrogant or hardcore about things and, and tell people now nah, this is the way it's going to be. And, and that's all there is to it. If you don't like it, then get out of here. That's definitely not a good attitude to have. And you're not going to be able to win many people over with that kind of attitude. I don't think that's a powerful answer, man. Powerful answer. Let's speed up a little bit and let's get up to, all right, you're getting into trading. You're getting into trading. You haven't met quite yet into a uh, IML or Forex. You're not there quite yet. You're not at that point, but you're just now getting in. What is this like? And what does it feel like? What is it? What is the, what are you, what's going through your body? Well, the first uh, experience I had was when I was 19, a friend, uh, he was making a call and I said, well, what was that about? And he said, I'm telling my broker to buy me some Motorola stock. I make about 500 a month. Well, when I heard that 500 a month, man, that's like half of my paycheck. And it's just having money sitting inside working for you. So he called me uh, about a week later and said, son, have you opened your broker account yet? said, no, sir. He said, you need to get down there and open. I got a stock going through the roof right now. Yeah. And I'm up $12,000. And I'm going, what? I left my work. I told my boss, I got to go to the uh, broker and I'll be right back. I went down to Merrill Lynch, opened the account, and I transferred $10,000, which is what I had at 19 years old, saved up from working. Transferred it all in. And I told the lady, I said, I need to buy uh, $10,000 worth of this symbol right here. And she looked at it and said, uh, that's really risky. You sure you want to do that? It was a penny stock that had gone from like four cents and it was now at $18 in the course of one day shot through the roof. So I got in at $18 and in 30 minutes, it was up to 21. I had made $500 in 30 minutes and the SEC 
Securities and Exchange Commission halted trading. Well, make a long story short, that was a scam and I lost my $10,000. But I didn't look at it like that. Right. I looked at it like this. I'm like thinking most people, this is the point to where you break down and you say, I'm done, no more, never again. You said, I want some more. So I would love to. This is a thought that went through my mind. I was up $500 in 30 minutes. If that can happen once, it can happen again. Okay, so I got caught in a scam on this one. Next time I'm not. Well, I ended up learning or getting into chat rooms and, and uh, learning how to trade by watching other people or listening to what they were saying. And my grandfather actually uh, passed away several years after that and I got $25,000 and I took that and I started trading with it. And that's what I turned into 1.2 million and then ended up getting caught in that scam. But I remember, uh, you know, uh, an ex-girlfriend of mine, she actually messaged me on Facebook Messenger uh, a couple months ago. And she said, wow, look at you now. I remember uh, that computer right as we walked into your apartment, that computer right by your door. And if there was one thing I couldn't do was interfere with your trading schedule. <laughs> and I said, yeah, I remember that because I was trading Google back then in 2004. And it caused uh, some heartaches in my relationship because I told her, I said, look, this is serious stuff. This is how I make money and you just need to relax and I'll be ready to go with you or call you or, or come pick you up when I'm done trading, when the market is closed. But until <laughs> then, you're going to have to wait. So she understood and she felt like she took a back seat to my trading. Fast forward, I got caught up in the scam and I lost uh, all of that money. And then I bounced back. It was now it was difficult because I could no longer get people to to trade or to put money into trade because of all the money that we had put in and we lost in that scam. So I had to uh, start over. Well, I ended up borrowing some money somehow and started learning to trade options. So I went from stocks, penny stocks to stocks to options. And actually back in the day, I wanna say back in 2003, uh, one, of the, one of the early penny stocks that I traded was a symbol called DJTC. And I made uh, made several hundred dollars off of that symbol. And that was Donald J. Trump casinos. Huh. So <laughs> that was back. Amazing. <laughs> and that was a penny stock back in the day. It was like 62 cents when I bought it, went up to 89 cents. I made about $1,000. And then the, before you know it, it had come all the way back down and uh, uh, zero right now. I don't know what it, if it's still a, a traded symbol. But that's beside the point. Moving on, I traded options and option was where I saw the power of the market. And I made, uh, one day I made $70,000 in 15 minutes trading Garmin, but options are a very risky, very tough instrument to trade. And if you don't know how to do it, I would just say, be careful. It's a lot easier to trade Forex and you will do a lot better trading Forex. If I would have known, well, I knew about Forex in 2007, if I would have come over, I would have never traded anything else. It's the most powerful market, the easiest way to compound and grow your money exponentially. But I teach you how to do it in a conservative manner. So trading, it's had highs and lows, you know, half a million dollars in two days. I've lost a lot of money because I, I've taken bigger risks than normal. And it's about learning how to trade slow and steady. It's a marathon, not a sprint. And that's what I try to teach people to to. Uh, use proper risk management. Okay, so like there's certain kinds of, actually, you know, let me go back to this comment box because I'm just keep on rolling on, rolling on. All right, right. Let me look in the comment box, see here. Um, uh, well, Emily Batty said her grandmother died of cancer. So uh, she's relating right. to your story there a little bit here. Um, And then right. she said, I agree. So she's uh, they're, they're in there listening inside there. Ladies and gentlemen, you have any comments? Make sure you put them in the comment boxes. We'll we'll make sure to ask them. Um, so uh, I actually want to go back to um, uh, finding finding um, your passion. Okay, so like, all right. Some people grow up say, you know, I want to be a basketball player. Some people say I want I want to do swimming. Some people say I want to do boxing. And you said I want to trade, or <laughs> how did how did that work out? Like. Uh, I mean, I'm just curious. I, yeah, I I actually was a salesman or a business person from 
primary school. So at seven years old, seven and eight years old, we had a, a little convenience store, a hole in the wall convenience store up the street from our primary school. And I used to jump over the fence and run through the bushes during our break time and go and buy candy and come back and sell it to the kids uh, when I was in primary school. Well, by the time I reached uh, high school, and this was in the islands, I didn't do it here in the States when I got to high school. But uh, by the time I reached high school, I had graduated to making 100 to $150 a day selling candy. And I would go to the grocery store and I'd buy big old uh, 10 packs of those Wrigley Juicy Fruit and Double Mint, five packs. Well, I found out that if you break the pack open and you sell the packs individually, the sticks, I'd sell the, the uh, chewing gum sticks for 25 cents. I'd buy the whole pack for a quarter and then I would end up making $1.25. So I learned about how to make money, profit and loss. My loss came from people stealing my bag. So I, I had to carry my backpack on my front and keep my arms around it because they'd jerk it off my back or they'd open it while we were walking. They'd rob me. They'd beat me up. They'd tell on me if I didn't give them candy. So I learned about business from an early age, uh, profit and loss. And it has helped me to understand trading. But I always felt that I was going to be a business owner and that I would, uh, I always felt that I'd make a lot of money. That's awesome. I didn't know how it was going to happen, but I felt like I would. That's an awesome story, yes. man. I, I just love it. Like, I just, you know, just curious about that. Now, now, as far as um, uh, someone else looking in through their life and trying to find their passion and say, you know, I, I don't know what I want to do. I don't know who to be. I don't know. How, how, can you give any advice on maybe getting someone to say, hey, this is what they like or what they don't like? Could you give any advice to anyone that might be needing to understand what their passion could be? Absolutely. It it all stems from who you are as an individual. You know, we all have different personalities and we have uh, different beliefs, different understanding. We have a different worldview, the way things work based on our upbringing from our family influences, the culture that we grew up in, the religious experience we had, the political experience that we had. So it all depends on who you are as a person. What do you love? What motivates you to do something to be something. What is it that you feel whenever you think about it? It makes you happy or have your serotonin levels inside of you uh, cause you to smile. And once you find that, you need to start to tap into it and develop those skills. And it takes time. If it's easy, everybody would be doing it. It's like trading. I tell you, if trading was easy, everybody would be doing it. And we'd all be trillionaires. The fact of the matter is, it's not easy, it's a learned skill. It's a multi-millionaire skill set, and it's like learning a new language. And I tell people, when you come in to learn, you're not going to make a million dollars overnight. I can show you how to compound your money over time, but you have to put one foot in front of the other, step by step. It's the same thing. Tony Robbins didn't become a powerful motivational speaker overnight. I guarantee you he stood in front of the mirror in his bathroom and had post-it notes with different sayings and quotes all on his mirror, and he was just talking to himself. I guarantee you did. Yeah. And I've done the same thing, uh, learning to do public speaking and motivational speaking, where I used to stand in front of the mirror and talk as well. I read uh, tons of books. You know, I got a yeah, whole bunch love, of books. I would love to here. talk about that, your book selections. What kind of books would you suggest for the entrepreneur or the person looking to get deep down and dirty inside of uh, doing their own thing? Well, uh, I've got, I got several and actually, this was a book. Let me just see here. Uh, so these are just a few books. So I've got, uh, let's see. This was one that I read when I was younger. And it's called Young What? And it's Steps to Become a Successful and Young Entrepreneur. So this was many years ago. This book, uh, I don't remember what the, the time frame on it was, but many years ago, Invest Your Way to Wealth. Oh, so nice. I have uh, by Kiplinger. And then obviously I, I read stuff about coach and coaching, you know, five business secrets to high performance coaching. 
there's there's different uh different things, different books that you can read to help you motivate yourself and uh become the best you can. I actually got another book right here, uh, a couple more books. And this is only a small amount. I've got boxes full of books, but you know, safe money and another one from zero to hero. So I read different books by people that are very inspirational that will get things and put things on the inside of me. It's kind of like, you know, the Bible or your religious book that you read. Well, it says to read these verses and read over this so that in that moment, then you can recall what was on the what was in that book because it's now on the inside of you. You keep reading, putting it on the inside of you so that in that moment you need it, you can recall it from memory. It becomes a part of who you are. When you read motivational books and, and books about uh, becoming a better you, then it gets on the inside of you and you see things differently. You stop being a negative person. You stop always griping about your situation and, and you decide, you know what? I'm going to be the change. I'm going to be the difference maker. I'm going to turn my situation around, even though it doesn't look good. I'm going to make it happen. And that is coming from the inside of you after you put it on the inside of you. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, here's a, here's an off the wall question. What, what's favorite food? And then we'll get back to the seriousness. I like sushi, Japanese steakhouse. Uh, one of my favorite foods. Awesome. Awesome. Now, now, Let's uh let's go ahead and turn this thing up, turn this notches on it, and let's look at some uh speak on some of this uh, trading. Let's speak on some right. a little bit there. Um, would you have any things that you might be able to say for the very first person, like swipe trades? Is what everybody wanted to do, wanted to get into swipe trades, and I've always tried to say, um, as in anything, because again, ladies and gentlemen, I'm not into trading yet. I'm I'm hoping to get started. And like I like I always told you all, I'm going to go get some education about it first. So that's absolutely why we have Justin J Rock, uh, Mr. J Rock, <laughs> Mr. Justin Fraser, right here on the channel, so we can actually get a study and understanding of what this is actually. So my question is: is if you're new to this, what is one of the main things that you need to do when you get started? Is it is it sit down and listen, or is there another another way to actually get into this? <clears throat> Absolutely. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is to study. You need to go through the basics and we have videos. So the company that I'm with is called iMarkets Live and it is a subscription service that you, it's an education company that will teach you how to trade Forex in different markets and very powerful concept. I wish it would have been around uh, 20 years ago, but the fact of the matter here it is now and you will plug in and start going through the basic training courses because if you don't even know how to enter an order or you don't know the basic trading terminology, you do not want to trade your money because you will lose it in 10 minutes. The fact is you have to sit down with anything, just like learning a new language, and you've got to start from the beginning. What is A, B, C? How do I say in Spanish, where is the bathroom? How do I say in Chinese, hello, how are you, etc.? You want to go through the basics and they've got videos in the IML Academy that will go beginner, intermediate and advanced. You also plug yourself into chat rooms like I have a chat room called uh, Cryptos Chat. It starts with a K. Go so ahead, it's in go the ahead, Telegram. Go ahead and spell that out for us, please. So the, the address is t.me forward slash Cryptos, K-R-Y-P-T-O-S chat, C-H-A-T. Or... You can go to my broadcast channel and you can find that as well. It's uh, t.me forward slash jrock forex. And most of my channels are jrock forex, like my Facebook page, my YouTube channel, my Telegram channel, my Instagram channel, and even my Snapchat. They're all jrock forex and even my Twitter, even though I don't use that very often. But you plug yourself in and you start to listen and you learn from other people and watch the live trading. I do live trading on a regular basis where I get in there and I show people how to trade. You watch me trade. And when you watch a master trader and you see how it's done, you can start to think like them. And when I'm trading and I'm doing live trading, I'm telling you every single thought process that I'm having while I'm trading so that you can have that thought process as well. And you see what to look for 
so that one day you will get good at it as well. Mm, nice. And that's, that's the key. Uh, I think, I think a lot of it is just really, and I've noticed that, um, but if you want to learn something, take the time, sit down, watch it, read it, and then kind of don't put your hands on it yet. Let it, let it fester in there a little bit. Then before you know it, affirmation, comes right. confirmation, you know, so it's like, that's the way it is. It'll just now, now, if we're looking into uh, some of the some of the rules or some of the things that you might you might suggest whenever you're, are you are, first off are you a long term trader or a, a short term trader? Uh, more of a short term trader. I like to get in and get out. Nice, nice. Any tips on short term trading, scalping? If, if 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 ladies and gentlemen, scalping they call that scalping, and that that's you're gonna need to go back because I didn't know what it meant first either. I thought they were talking about like pilling people's you know, caps off. Or, yeah, I, had to, I had to go back and get some lessons too. So right. any, any tips on scalping? Yeah, scalping just means you get in and get out. You're capturing uh, five or 10. They're called pips. Pips are points in percentage. And it basically just means uh, you're getting whatever size of the trade that you want. You can get a 10 cent trade. You can get a, a 11 cent. You can bump your trade, but the lowest uh, trade amount is 10 cents per pip. Now a pip is 10 basis points. I'm not going to get into the, the technicals of it, but per pip stocks move, uh, currency pairs move in pips and they move in a pip is a hundredth of a penny for most currency pairs. So whatever your lot size is or your, your maximum risk, it will be calculated by that. So if I did a, a 1.0 lot size, that is $10 per pip. If the pair moves 10 pips, then I made $100. So you want to figure out what your risk management is. And I teach you how to do that based on what your account value is to start. And then to scalp, you've got to learn trading strategies. So I have what I believe is the best trading strategy available. And it's called a moving average strategy with an RSI combination. Basically, you watch your lines on the chart and I can just show you real quick. Uh, let me minimize this screen. Sweet. And Gentlemen, we're getting a close in depth look here. We're getting a good sneak peek. So, uh, so I like All right. oh. So that is my trading screen that I'm looking at right now. And you see the lines, the red, the blue, the purple, yellow, white, those are called moving averages. And I show you how to stay in a trade when these green and red bars, that is the price movement. So I show you how to stay in the trade all the way down until it gets way down here. And then you would have gotten out of the trade based on an RSI indicator, which I actually don't have. I took it off for a minute, but I actually got out of this trade a minute ago. And then you get back in and you ride it all the way up when it gets on the other side of the moving averages. This part right here is called consolidation, where it's just up and down, no real action. And you're waiting for its next move. All of this right here. So that's sideways trading. So what I do is teach you how to get in at the right time and then how to get out when you see a move, wherever it hits a, a line, it'll become resistance or support. And I'll just show you the trades that I've made today. Let's see. Uh, and we are going to scroll. Hang on one second. Uh, let's see here. Pull that all the way up. And let's see. So I'm trying to see where we're at here. Okay. So can you see, so there's the numbers of the trading that I made today. And I don't know if you could see on the bottom. So like the red ones are the, the losses where I got uh, stopped out of the trade, but it was for $6.80, 680, 47, 91, 684, $70. And then I made 686, 391, 748, 192. Uh, took a dollar hit there. Then I made 2181. Well, my total realized profit on the day was, I don't know if you can see that number. 8,152. Correct. Oh my so, God. <laughs> that's, that's unbelievable. I, I saw, uh, how long do you say that took you to, to do? How long did it, did it take me? Well, I actually got in that trade, uh, last night. So because of the amount of money that I trade, I didn't actually sleep very much last night because, I uh, kept watching it and, it and it went against me. 
So I was negative for a while, but I didn't want it to go so far against me and I just cut it off. So I was waiting and waiting and it didn't get to my uh, level where I would be very uncomfortable and just have to close it out. So I was okay. And I just kept watching it, opening my eyes and watching it, going back to sleep. Then I'd wake up and finally it started coming back in my favor. And then I ended up closing out right before I got on the call with you. So I'm done trading for the day. I don't need to trade anymore. I've got some biz business to take care of. So uh, it was a good day for me. Yeah, amazing, an amazing, an amazing day. Um, I know I know that you're really, really busy, and I don't want to keep you on long because we're actually going on about an hour now. Um, okay. But I want. And I do I have to say one more thing: uh, results are not typical, and past performance does not guarantee future uh, performance. That is a disclaimer that I have to give anytime people see uh, what I'm doing or how I'm trading or my results. You're not going to make that kind of uh, money until you really learn how to do it and you're you're trading with uh 50 or a hundred thousand dollars and again ladies and gentlemen if you're 50 to a hundred thousand dollars ladies and gentlemen and again again if you want to get this understanding you got to do just exactly what i'm doing reach out to the man um believe it or not i i it took a while to get him here on the show for you ladies and gentlemen but as you can see he's here He's not yeah. too good to, to say that he'll help. He's not. And he, he, I'm just direct. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just a regular man out here reaching out to another man with with advice, reaching out with to another man that's got more of this than what I had. And so what I do is I reach out and, and he helps. And, and so I, I encourage you all to do the same. If you want to get in and start doing some things like this, reach out. Or else, you know, a, a close hand doesn't get anything put in it, and nor will a hand that doesn't reach get picked up. It's just the way that that cookie crumbles. But um, now, I, I really want to uh, just for you, for a person that's like, um, what do you call that? Uh, jumping off the porch. I want you to, for a person that's afraid to jump off the porch, afraid to get started. Oh, I don't know. I don't want. I don't. I, all the ifs, ands, or buts words of advice, words of pushing, words of motivation for those individuals to say, you know what, pick yourself up, get up off the couch, go out there and go do whatever it is that you're doing. Absolutely. And I say that too. I say, if ifs, ands, and big booties don't get you anywhere, if you don't put your one foot in front of the other and put action to your plan, you're going to stay on the couch and you're going to grow bigger and bigger by the day. So, one of the big uh, catchphrases I like to use is fortune favors the bold. Fortune favors the bold. No risk, no reward. It's not going to be given to you. If you don't get out there and try, if you don't put one foot in front of the other and try to make uh, at least one step toward a goal that you have, it'll never happen. So you've got to get up off of your hind parts and start moving and take that step of faith. And who knows? You may be surprised at what awaits you down the road. It's not going to be easy, but if it was easy, anybody would be doing it. Everybody would be doing it. It's like trying to get to the NFL. If you don't start practicing from a young age and really doing more than the others will do, if you work harder than everybody else today, then tomorrow you'll enjoy what nobody else gets to or what very few get to because you put in the effort. So those athletes that are professionally paid multimillionaires, they worked very hard to get where they're at. You cannot uh, be an elementary and then say, I want to play in the NFL. You'll go out there and get your head knocked off. You'll get killed on the first play right. because you're not ready. The fact of the matter is you have to prepare yourself. You got to get in there and hit the gym. You got to work out. Number one, you've got to mature and grow and develop into an adult. And I say that I'm talking about uh, the time it takes to learn a new skill set or to become the best you. You've got to develop into that person. But I've got kids, 15 and 16 year olds that are in my chat rooms that are learning how to trade and that have ordered my DVD. I actually have a DVD uh, that I created several years ago and it teaches people how to trade. So how it's called Skilled Investing how, 101. How do we get that DVD? How can ladies and gentlemen get that DVD? Okay, so you can uh, go to my chat room and in the top of my chat room, there's a pinned message. Or if you just go in the chat room, and say, how do I order the DVD? Then it's there. I have a website that'll be ready in a couple of weeks or maybe next week. It's called jrock 
dot X, Y, Z, because that is the end of all you need. The end of the alphabet. That's the end of anything you need. How'd you, go, how'd, so, you come, how'd you come up with the name? I, I usually do a piece for everybody and say uh, how to name your brand or how to come up with the name for your brand. How did you come up with the name for that? Uh, J-Rock X, Y, Z. Well, it's, it's actually when I was looking for a website or a URL and I was looking through the different ends, I actually created another website called moneyphone.cash because the, I've only started using my laptop to trade in the last few weeks. For the last several months, I've used my cell phone and I made tens of thousands of dollars trading Forex from my cell phone. So I call it moneyphone.cash. It's a website I have. But when I was looking for my personal branding website, I knew it was going to be called J-Rock, but I needed an ending. And so when I looked through the endings and I saw X, Y, Z, I said, that's it. It just pow, it hit me right in the head. It said, the end, jrock.xyz, the end. That's all you need. Awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, yeah. Any question for anyone at all? Because I usually do this as a piece too. I, I have the, uh, the guests ask a question to the audience, and then I, I hope that the audience answers the question because I end up editing it up and then sending it back out there. But for you right now, any question that you want to have answered by the audience, please ask it. Well, I can ask a, you know, a life question like, what are you doing to prepare for your future? to become financially stable. Mm, mm. What are you doing to prepare for your future? What are you doing to become financially stable? Hey, J-Rock, thank you so much for being on this mm. interview today. Hey, appreciate you. Thanks for having me, man. It's been really Definitely. good. Go ahead, plug your social media sites before we get off here. Go ahead, plug your social media sites. All right, so I've got, as I said, Facebook. You can do uh, fb.me forward slash j forex you can look me up on YouTube, J Rock Forex, Snapchat, Twitter, and I'm sure there's a couple others, but generally they're all J Rock Forex, and it's J R O C K F O R E X. Forex stands for Foreign Exchange Currency. It's just a uh, abbreviation. Sweet. And then my Go, my ahead. Telegram channel. You can find uh, in Telegram. It's an app like WhatsApp, but it's where a lot of people uh, have channels and they can have chat rooms in there. So t.me forward slash jrock forex cryptos chat. And I've got a couple others in there, but I have all the links. You can find them once you get into my main chat room. You can and see the I, links in there. What I'll do too is I'll be, uh, I'll be getting the links for you all, ladies and gentlemen. I do have some links sure. inside the description box that you can use, uh, but not the um, not the Telegram or uh, the, the ME ones that you were saying. I don't have those ones, so you're going to need to make sure – to uh, go ahead and click through on those links and then ask him, send him a friend request, ask him, ask him, you need help, ask him. He's not going to tell you no, he's here to help you. Um, That's right. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that you've enjoyed this interview. Uh, as you know, I am here bringing knowledge. If it's not knowledge, it's, then you're not going to find it here. It's Montez McCamish from itsmontez.com. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and share. If you don't do that, you are not going to be able to keep up. Thank you so much for tuning in. Peace.